So here we go. Um, just going over some modifications I've made for my weekly group who plays Open Legend, and I actually am coming up with a campaign for Open Legend, and I might play with these guys in this uh, this era of, of COVID madness, right? Um, so I can just go over. I've been working at this for about a week and a half now. I've used a bunch of workshop mods. Um, I've actually learned some scripting, which I don't know if anyone knows me, but I, you know, everyone says learn to code and I'm technically, I, I know a lot of technical stuff, but scripting, it's not that I don't have a mind for it. I have no, I don't have the patience for it, I guess. Um, so the table uh, was taken from the workshop and it's this awesome, um, table called the Kraken. Um, out of all the tables that people have mod, there was a there's a grid table that's really awesome that I love that I originally was was doing. Um, but it, uh, it there were some issues with animations on it. Um, it would generate your custom tabletop. And then in between loads, it would generate and place one and then it would cause the surface to drop down. So if you were trying to save um, a board or something on top of it, it would cause them to it would it would cause collision errors and stuff like that. I I fought with it and fought with it and fought with it for a long time before I decided I I just I gotta I gotta reset. Um, so I took the the, the crack in, but I did take the lighting and the floor from the the grid hack because uh, it was really kind of cool looking. I liked the a lot of the backgrounds, as cool as they are, it's neat to have the TARDIS behind you. It's neat to have all this other stuff for a 360 picture. I found it incredibly distracting. Uh, you're really just trying to play a game. And it's it, it's cute, but it's just kind of like, you know, they had like the holodeck from, from Star Trek The Next Generation. Yeah, it's kind of neat. I, I don't don't mind it, but I guess, I, I guess I'm just looking for a more like, you should be playing and concentrating on your game. Um... So I took that. I uh, I took the cannons, the pirate cannons, because I love the dice cannons. The trays are also a mod from on there. Um, and these, uh, the dice chest models, these little, these little. I like the chests. Uh, the bags are cool and all. I have actually have them, and I'll I'll go over this part here. And then there's a nice modification for a memory bag. And the scripting, I I tried to start scripting it on my own. And I was talking to my buddy Micah, who also does the stream on here, and he, and he, you know, he's like, "Oh yeah, I know." I said, "How'd you do that? How'd you script that?" He goes, "I didn't script anything." He's like, "I just went on the workshop, and you know, of course, someone had done it way better than I would have ever scripted it." So I went through and looked at the script so I could try to learn some from it. But um, the nice thing about these is that each player has these little buttons and allows them to. It allows me to set save the game state and save these object states so that I can just call them up whenever I want. So, so at at the beginning, you guys, you could tell I got the Brassley logo, I got the grid going, because um, we're going to be using the grid um, to, to you know, open legend. It allows you to, you know, you you can find on a grid just like you do in Pathfinder or or D and I've always played uh, Theater of the Mind in every single campaign I played when we were in high school and we were doing we did D and D, we did Palladium, we did you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is also Palladium. Um, we were always just like. Is with, between you and the and the GM, and for some reason nowadays it's like it, I love the miniatures. I love I have all the Dwarven Forge terrain. Don't get me wrong, um, not all of it, but you know, I want all of it. Um, so I love the terrain. It's you know boys and toys, right? Um, or just uh, nerds and toys, right? Um, so anyway, let's get into it. Um, from the start, you know I, I customized my own board, customized this. Uh, my daughter came up with the Brass League logo for me. She did a great job. I made my own initiative tracker and uh, set it up so that I could actually, um, I did the, you know, just it's a simple gradient in, in Photoshop. Um, the, the, the GM section here is hidden. Um, I'm still working on a script that I try to pull from the guy who did grid hack to know how to have a button where it turns on and off. But at least this way, the, the, the GM knows, they see that they are, they are hidden. So the first thing we'll do is we'll switch over to, we'll change colors. So I'm gonna go over the colors. We've got um, all the different colors here. And I've just now realized that I put yellow in the wrong spot. So we'll, well, I'm actually change that while we're here. Um, actually I could do that right now. Uh, so anyway, so I'm gonna start as the game master. So now as you see, now that I've, 
now that I'm in the Game Master seat, all of the hidden stuff is now available for me to see. And while I'm remembering it, even though we're on the stream, I'm going to change the hands. So we're going to change this to orange and this to yellow. And now that's right. So let me save that. All right, so I got that fixed. So the game master for setup, well, when we, you know, this is the game state load at this time. I'll be able to save it um, if we go in between sessions and we want to save where the pieces are. But I also have a, a memory bag here for for just that purpose. Um, so what we've got here is you've got your enemy tokens. You've got your tiles if you ever want to bring out uh, tiles. I'm, I actually did all these uh, patterns myself. Some of these I actually took from the Dwarven Forge. Um, uh, they have a train trays. So I actually took a picture of the train tray and just imported the text here, or the, the text, the, the image here, so that you had like the different, uh, like there's the water. And they generate the grid and they can be, um, they can be, uh, they can be made bigger to fit on here. This is just to be able to throw stuff out there. Um, this is these are all infinite bags so you can just generate as much as you want these are the uh the enemy tokens so uh, each one is uh actually needs to be i copied these so i'm gonna have to go and i'll i'll have them set up so that the description says enemy the enemy number so it looks like see I'm, I'm working through the bugs i had uh thought i had everything ready to go but it looks like these are all cloning each other so you have to go through. Anyway, I'll do that later. But they'll have, so when you hover over them, they'll have the actual enemy number. Um, you get your PDF. You've got your Boon and Bane cards, which you can pull out. And I figure at this point, you know, we label things when things happen. We can just flip the card over, put it underneath the token, so you know that that Bane has been or that Boon is is active. You got some some dice for the uh, for the GM and their own cannon, which we'll go over the cannons in a little bit. And there, so it's all marked, which I, what I think is kind of neat is, is that when you fire the cannon, the dice kind of pop up and out of the hidden zone, and then they drop back down again. So people can see that it's like that whole, when, you know, when people start talking and you're sitting at the table and, and then all of a sudden the GM starts, you hear dice clinking and everyone kind of like perks up and goes, what, what's going on, right? Uh, this is the Fog of War Revealer, and I'll go over Fog of War because actually they did a pretty good job in t uh, Tabletop Simulator making Fog of War uh, available. Um, so this is just a flat out, it, he uses this token to just cl completely clear it. So there's a lot of times where our GM will like, oh, you see a building and he'll put the, put the, basically he'll cover it. And then until you enter the building and then he'll just open it all the way up. Usually this will just be uh, quick. He can swipe open it or I have the token set up for the players to reveal fog of war as well. Um, and so, so basically what he does is he starts. Uh, basically, this is this is an order for him to. I have it so that you can recall all the pieces back, or place all the pieces. So, if he takes his enemies and puts them out on the board, and we're at the end of the play session, or he needs to clear, so say he's got everything out, blah blah blah. The other cool thing about the enemy tokens is I made these when you flip them over that they are dead or defeated, so to speak. So if you flip them over as you're playing see them defeated um, but what I did was is I have this place and recall so that you can just pull everything back that way these these memory uh, chests they used to be the memory bags are really awesome for that because you can actually set them up and you can click what you want to have um, set up in in this so by default I just have it for these tokens here I'm sure there's other tokens that I'll get that I'll do um, the big 20 is a great, you know, when a big thing happens. So I've got a big 20 for for the uh, for the GM. This is just my OCD. Um, I'll probably set up another one of these, or maybe I'll just I'll set up a different one, not for just the tokens, for the rest of the stuff on his side. So you can just hit the button and it'll pull everything back out and put it back away. Um, next up is the other side. So this is just a um, for play, if players need 
this is for players to copy any sort of um, items that they want. Um, so if you hit the place button, you get the open legend, legend book, which we'll go over what the players get for starting, but um, you get an extra counter if anyone needs a counter. If they want to use a dice tower instead of the cannon, um, I don't know why they would want to because the cannon's so awesome. It's a cannon, right? You're shooting your dice out of the cannon. Uh, but you never know. Some people want to be more traditional and use the dice tower. Um, this is just the Brass League board, which you can use to move items around with. I have it set up on both sides, just um, on this side, so that the, if, the D, if the GM wants to use it, they can. I set up the Open Legend RPG so you can actually, well, A, you can pop it out over here. But when you, I set it up with a page offset, so when you go to page one, it is actual page one. So when you're searching for the different things that you want, uh, there's also places I can put bookmark, bookmarks, which I'll do at some point. Um, so there's that there. Um, I went over the cards last time, but you know you can always go through and search, and you can find whichever card is, and they're all labeled. So you take the okay. So we have a persistent bane on someone. You throw the card out, you flip it over, and you can just place it near whoever, whichever token is has that effect on them. You can put it near them, whatever it is that makes it easier for you. Um, so there's that, and then of course you can place it back. Oh wait, that's because it's part of a deck. So that's probably why that doesn't work. All right, well, I'll have to think of this. Hey, again, we're going through bugs. Let me flip this and put it back in. Um, so I'll look to get that in there. Let's make a good note of that. Um, counters are just there for, for hit points. And then again, I have these, uh, the tablets here in case people want to use them. They're set to go to hero muster to start. So people can actually, um, copy and paste. So if I went to, it makes it easier for me, but I just, I have my character already here, so I can go in here. And That's over here. Pop out, pop the screen. So now this is my my character just leveled up, um, and I can I can just copy this, um, clone it or copy it, and just move it over to whichever section I'm playing at, and I can follow along here if I want. But I, I put a copy of my character in to kind of feel more like you're at the tabletop. Um, but so that's there for people to copy. Um, I have this dice chest, which I went through, and I probably went through three different workshop mods that had just different dice, different dice colors, all that sort of stuff. By default, they give everyone two sets, but if they want just different colors for the hell of it, then I have a bunch of um, bunch of different colors in here. And someone put a whole bunch of them together, and they were they're really some of them are really really good. Some of them you just like you can't even see, but um, but so I got rid of some of those, but they're. So, um, so there's that the dice chest, this side of the board. Okay, for each player, I have them with a default setup that they place. Mine has my character. Um, other people could we could set up their characters if they wanted. So, and each one has a color because that's just the way tabletop simulator works. So then I made a theme for each player based upon their color. So. Um, so there's Blitzman, Shooting Star, the Metamorph, and his minions, because he can generate minions. So Metamorph. And Oliver Ramos. I made him red for a reason, because he likes to light things on fire. Alma Dieter. And then my character, the blue suit. Um, I've got the... Everyone's got a little a bigger 20, but this one, when it rolls a 1, it says... value one so that's just a nice little nice little bonus there um, you know it's a place to pull your stuff back so at any time if you have actually let me I'm gonna test this out uh, do this here that place okay so it brings that back does it bring the individual individual card back is the question now okay so it's the deck that becomes the object 
not the not the cards that are singular. That's interesting. I may have to set up a I may have to set something else up. I'll look into it. Um so yeah, so we have your boon and bane cards. Again, these are really just to help you, to help uh, the players if they want to, instead of, because there's lots of times we're constantly looking stuff up. I have these physical cards for when we want to play face to face, but you're, you know, you're constantly looking stuff up. So you can either use the book or you can just have the card. You can just search through the deck and find uh, the proper one and put it in front of you or put it on the character or whatever. Um, get this guy placed back here. Okay. Um, I have the um, the hit point counter, so I figured you know people could just have it up over here. You can write it in, you can use it, you know, notepad or whatever. But having a little counter here, so I could just say, okay, my max hit points are 22. Put myself up to 22, and then when I take hits, take them away. Um, you know, everyone gets the notebook so that they could write their own their own notes there. Um, I just felt like. Why not? Or you could go to the Hero Muster site and you could you could do your hit points there. So there's plenty of different ways to do it. Um, each of everyone's token is set to not. So these are set to permissions for only that user. So if I change to blue, I can move my token, but I can't move Alma Dieter's token or Oliver Ramos's token. And this is by design because it's not that I'm trying to limit people. It's just trying to control a little bit of the chaos. Um, we all like to screw around. It's like when we're playing and we use WebEx. Right now we're using WebEx, and we'll still use WebEx, I'm sure. But I'll be playing here. Um, but like you, you know, you have annotations and people are, are writing all over stuff, and it's like, okay, come on, guys, get it out, you know. So, um, so I just set it up so that everyone has their own token or their own initiative token if they want. Um, so there's that for all the player setup. The initiative setup is pretty cool. I'm actually kind of, um, there's a lot of different stuff. There was some different, like you could write stuff in on initiative cards, you could do whatever. I just like a visual representation. And I, to me, this is easy, first to last. So first in, last out, as in regards to how the initiative order works. Um, I didn't do an automatic one, but what I did was I made snap points on here. So you have your enemies, because the enemies generally all go at once. And then you have the turn tracker. So everyone rolls initiative, and blue can only do his. Um, I can't do the other ones, but this is more for uh, the GM to to take control. So, uh, you know, he goes, okay, who, who rolls what? He can move everyone around. There's snap points on here so that no matter where he moves it, you know, everything is pretty easy to come through. Um, you know, you can snaps go all the way up from the beginning to the end. So it doesn't matter. You can always see. And then anyone who's here can see, oh, if you're on this side, you're going, you're in the initiative order, you're higher in the initiative order. And then um, the turn marker, he can move and say, okay, it's this person's turn. Okay, it's this person's turn. Okay, it's this person's turn. You know, all the way down and then top of the order. This just makes it easier for everyone to visualize. In my opinion, I think it's pretty cool. Um, because it's a very simple problem to solve as opposed to trying to do anything heavy scripting wise there's a lot of stuff on the workshop that looks kind of neat and I, play, I played around with it where it's like automatic initiative or automatic turn order but i just kind of went with you know what's the simplest solution um and, that, and that's what that is in, in my opinion i mean i could take any sort of um feedback from people um so let's go through well i could show you how the the dice cannons work um, you can just pick up the dice and load them in. It's kind of a pain. It's kind of clunky. But like in this game, for example, it's like I know I'm going to be writing, rolling a 20-sided. And say I'm going to be rolling for a logic check, which is 2 die 8 for my character because I just leveled up. So if I'm doing a logic check, this is what I do. Well, there's a little load button here. And then you just fire. And they usually... Oh, look at that. That one landed over there. So you can... Usually doesn't do that, but uh, so you can get your your dice roll there from just holding it over it, and you can see what the different rolls are. You can go look at the dice if you want to, and you can always reload it and fire again. Um, there, that actually hit it. It's 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 clunky, but it's fun. So it gives you even when it when it lands on a certain um, side, it'll tell you. 
right, how the hell that is a, hold on, what is this? It's a three. So it, I found the die eights and the die fours are not very good, but uh, end of the day, if you just want to roll your dice, you can just roll your dice. Um, you can also hit Q and it'll just randomize the dice. It's not as fun. Um, so that's the, those are the dice cannons. I like them. That's why I put them in here. That's why I put them in there. I was going to do like one for each section. I'm like, okay, now it's just going to end up dice flying everywhere. People are going to be bored, you know, so that's fun. Um, so let me bring up, so this is the biggest thing that I, um, was really kind of working through with this. Um, I, so I, I, I had my GM send me, um, send me one of the maps we played on recently. And I converted it into a board. And I have the grid projecting to it. Now, it's not 100%, but if you were going to make for this, you can get the grid pretty much spot on if you want to. It's pretty close. And the point being, you then take it, so the GM would take it, put it on the board, lock it down. So now you've got, I mean, you can see where we were, but you have the image he came up with in Visio. Um, and as we go through and, and, and as we, so as you can see, I can put uh, the blue suit was here at one point. It snaps to either the centers or the knot. You can then set objects to also not have to be on the grid. So if we want to do this truck like this, it's an easy, take some of these tiles, make a truck, boom, throw it down. So we would just take, um, let's see, what we want to do, street cement tile. Let's just take this, bring it out. Let's bring it out, and we want to just make it bigger. Um, there's different ways to look at this. The top down is generally pretty good. I found when I'm playing Edge of Darkness with uh, with Micah, top down really helps. So here's a truck. We'll call it a truck. this attach so you have an object now here that could be quote unquote the truck you can label it if you want to uh, you can change it so it does not snap to the grid so now you can move it anywhere you want and you have a truck you know, give or take how long it was but and you can modify that however you want oh we got some boxes there too let's find my wood tiles Say these are um, these are the boxes. You can make them so they don't snap to the grid as well. Like with a quick, quick button. Just like this. Bam, bam. Take them, put them in the places that they were. Not a big deal. You can put the boxes here if you want. Let's just put them here. Um, you could even generate 3D objects if you wanted to. I know this is a 3D environment. For now, I was just trying to stick with trying to keep the maps. What was the easiest? And when I start actually building my own maps, I'll see about building up terrain to actually make it 3D. But for now, we just wanted a representation kind of what we were doing. I wanted to see what I could do to get this as a working model. Um, so, so we have Alma Dieter come out here. Maybe she's over here. And then you've got Oliver Ramos, who's probably right here. This is representations of Blitzman, Lightning Man, and then Shooting Star. Put him over here. And the Metamorph. I don't think the Metamorph had any minions in this one, but he can put his stuff here. And he can have some minions. Why not? It's fun, right? Minion, minion. The other cool thing is, is um, you can use the tiles as rep representation. When Metamorph becomes big, you can put a tile under him, attach him to the tile, and then he's really big, and he can have been taking up the 10-foot square. Um, and then as we go through, as you can see, like we've got stunned, we've got all these different ones. You could put them near them, or you can annotate uh, with text, or you could um, use decals. I'm going to get some decals in, which just is a nice little stamp, and then... It'll be an image that you can put in place, and then you can you can remove. Uh, so let's go over Fog of War while we're here. Um, I'm going to 
take all of these and move them to the side for now. I kind of want to show how uh, Tabletop Simulator handles Fog of War. So what would end up happening is, and this is the easiest way to do this, is to go top down, line up as much as you can, like so. Uh, you go over to Fog of War, there it is. And then start from, from a square, go to a square. Makes it nice and easy. Fog of War exists, bam. Flip over. Move that. Okay. There it is making me look bad. Did I did not click it correctly. Fog of War. Okay. Fog of War is there. Uh, what am I missing? I'm missing something here. I must have missed. I must have changed the setting. Fog of War. Hide objects. Well, there's your problem, Mike. Your fog isn't high enough. There we go. There it is. See? Uh, and you can actually see where the the, um, the tokens are. Um, so let me switch back over now. So now you can see the fog of war. So what happened was the fog of war was set to the surface of the table. But the board is a little bit higher. So when we look, you see that the board is higher than the... the so we needed to project the fog up through the board. Hence the reason why. Because I was only testing fog of war without the board put on the table. Anyway, so now if I'm the blue suit, if he wants fog of war to be like this, I can slowly move on here. Um, we can also set the blue suit's revealer um, to be, uh, you can set the range, and we can reset the field of view to be 180 and 270, and visualize. So now you can see, we can set it to a specific amount. So you know, as you're moving in, maybe you can't see behind you, and that's the way that, that he wants to roll it. And at this point, he could actually lock these pieces down and say, I don't want you guys to have permissions. I'm going to be moving this stuff around because I don't want to reveal all the fog. Um, I didn't... Um, I can't do this. Let me go to metamorphs. So, and then I also made it so that the fog of war is only revealed for the player. So each piece only reveals the section of the map for that player. And I was kind of doing that with the um, intent that... Uh, the, the GM can decide what everyone sees or doesn't see. Um, for the metamorph, he can do his thing. Uh, I'm flipping back over. But his minions, I don't have them actually seeing or revealing Fog of War because I didn't know if they had a specific, um, uh, basically a specific, if they could see what he could see. Um, so if I change over to Blitzman, see he's only got his his field of view um, and he doesn't see that you know the, the blue suits in here uh, maybe he's coming in from a different angle maybe he's coming in from this side and he only sees that so there's that whole thing uh, when I change to the GM he can see all the fog that's been revealed he can't see I don't think who specifically has seen it but you can kind of get an understanding of who is where so he would understand and if he just says, you know what, I want to reveal all, he just goes through. He can either just unclick Fog of War in general. He can do multiple. He can do multiple um, Fog of War boxes if he wants, or he could just use the Fog Revealer, which was a little thing I came up with. I know. TM Acme, um, Acme uh, Fog of War Revealer. So now we have, the, and you can also use the. Um, Fog to kind of show your view. I use it from the top of the tile. So the blue suit, whichever way he's facing, that's his view. Um, so we bring this back out here. Oh, do not have access. Go back to GM. All right, so he can put put all the stuff back in here. We're in the midst of a heated 
exchange on the docks. Uh, shooting star here. The other cool thing I wanted to show, which they implemented in this um, for the tiles, is you can you can use the the um, measurement the line measurement here. So you can use the the measuring tool to do your measurements. However, which way you can see that's the number of squares. You can also modify by right clicking on you can toggle measured movement and therefore when I'm moving blue suit I can see how many squares I am moving him which is a nice feature it can get annoying when you're moving your pieces around because you get this big line but it's a cool feature you can enable each player can enable it and that way they don't have to continue to ask or sit here and try to count it out you can just use that knowing that five foot squares that's 20 feet right so do a little bit of math. We do have a math teacher that plays. He's pretty quick with it, so he can probably help everybody out. They're like, what's eight? And he can be like, yeah, that's 40. Um, so, um, so, that, so that's kind of a neat, a, another neat little thing that people can do if they want to, or they can count it out or whatever. It's just kind of a neat little setup there. Um, and then, like I said before, you bring your your enemies into the fray, they're the different colors. I'm, I'm gonna make a couple of big boss enemies as well. Um, so maybe the purple enemies are a certain type. I was gonna make some like, I have some NPC tiles that I haven't brought back in that I will be uh, regenerating and, and, and bringing in so that they're their own. So you could tell that they're NPCs or non-combatants. Um, so maybe everyone's this way and then all of a sudden, oh no, this guy is defeated, cool, this guy is defeated. So. You don't have to move the tile, you can just hit F, flip it over, and there you go. Um, and, and, and the game can progress in that manner. Um, like I said, I can also use the tiles to build out what we're playing, and I plan on doing that next Tuesday when we play. He's going to reveal the map as we go, and I'm going to build out the tiles and play that way. Um, but it's nice to be able to import a picture, throw a grid on it, and, and be able to play. So I was just kind of using that as, as an example of kind of what I'm trying to, you know, so it's not as hard. Maybe we, 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 it's already hard enough to be writing a bunch of stuff for your players and, and then setting up scenarios and, and all that sort of stuff. You want your interface to just be nice and easy. And when you're sitting across the table from someone, you know, I've got my tiles that I can build ahead of time. Well, if I can do that ahead of time, and then you can save the object, and then you can just call the object in when you're ready to play. Um, or you could save the state of the game. So I could put the thing on the board, save the state of the game with it on, with the fog on, and everyone, you know, reset the way you want them. And then you can start the game that way too. So there's a couple of different options there. Um, I think I covered everything. I'll probably make some other modifications. Like I said, I'll put the NPCs in here. I might make, I'll probably make most of the stuff on this side of the board with the, the memory chest come out. Um, went over the dice. Went over the little hit point counters. I mean, yeah, aside from getting everyone's characters and try to get them the character sheets in there if they want them. Um, that's cool. I'll be playing on here, um, trying to incite the other guys to see if they want to at least use this as a reference to just try it out. Um, and then, you know, like still play the way we've been playing, but I'm going to be playing in here, rolling my dice with the cannon because it's the cannon, right? Um, and all that. So and then again... Um, cleanup is rather easy here um, from from a perspective of I can recall everything back clean up the board so all the player pieces are off the board these pieces can be deleted the board be deleted because it's a saved object. And we're back to our play space, kind of being reset for as needed. I mean, I can reload the game at the previous, you know, setup. So I'll go through the enemy tokens. I'll fix that, and that, you know, that's basically it. So, hey, thanks for watching.